Now, leading into this, this is some important tactica advice, but not quite in the way that you think. I do consider myself, and I would consider myself, primarily a narrative war gamer. Um, if we're talking about Warhammer 40,000, if we're talking about X-Wing miniatures, uh, I like to go in and create a story. I like to try and get some tabletop glory, make something interesting happen. This idea that you and I playing games, we're stepping out of space and time, taking time from our real life. I want to use that currency. I want it to be well spent. But that said, I also enjoy competitive play. This idea of going and playing in a tournament. And even if you're not a tournament player, I do believe it's important to do it a couple of times a year. And it, it might be a big, massive, massive event, or it could be a much smaller event at a local shop, 10 or 15 players. And uh, the reason why I say it's important to play in a competitive event a few times a year, even if you're 100% narrative, is because, well, first, it's going to test you. It's going to test you. It's going to force you to focus, you know, three or four games in a day and, and do the best you can against whatever you're matched up against. It might be a good list, might be a bad list. You have to do the best you can. That little bit of thinking pressure uh, is, is good. It's like, it's like exercise for the war gamer. It, it carries over. Um, second is because it allows you to network and see multiple armies multiple different play styles and meet and network with people. And these might be people in your local gaming circle, but given the radius of the event, if it's a bigger event, they're going to pull in players with all different builds. Um, it, it allows you to just see, like during a break, walk around and see some of the lists. What I like to do is during a break, um, this was part of my X-Wing kind of diet for a long time, take pictures because people will have their their squadron laid out i just take pictures of them i take pictures of them try to take pictures of the cards if they're out and now i have 30 40 50 different builds um for the meta in the moment that people are playing and then later when i'm home i can ask myself okay how would i counter this or what's the synergy it's, it's kind of like a training exercise to have that many people the event pulls in that many people so there's a lot even if you're a narrative player i just wanted to kind of frame that there's a lot as a narrative player that just a little bit of competition, just a little bit, um, will make you a better player. It will help you find your player personality, and it will help crystallize and focus you. So this way, as a narrative player, when you're like, you know, I want to do that like really, really cool thing, then there you go. It'll work from that perspective. With that framework, the piece of advice, uh, the, the first tournament that I ever played in, First tournament that I ever played in, because for a long time, again, remember, I was a narrative player, was 2006 or 2007, 2007, 2007, uh, the Grand Tournament, Games Workshop Grand Tournament. Remember when Games Workshop actually supported events? Uh, we were going down to Baltimore, the club, the Battle for Salvation Gaming Club, and we were going to play in this event. And I, I was going to play my Space Marines, but... My buddy, the War Master, he was like, Fritz, you, you can't play Space Marines because we're representing the club. We got like 10 dudes going down. Space Marines are stocked. You have to play your Eldar. And that kind of led me into my Samhan War host. But the piece of advice that Matt gave me, which was spot on, he's like, you need a display board. You need a display board. Part of it is sometimes there's a painting competition or, or a judge of your army. Having a display board frames it. You create a diorama, a, a narrative. Yes, that. But there's a hidden aspect, a hidden aspect. And I'm going to relate to you why you need a display board. And it could be just something as simple as a picture frame with some texture and a couple of little pieces of terrain and maybe a little pocket for your dice and your tape measure. Having a display board is important because you need to stay focused, you need to stay relaxed, and you need to stay just just chill in between games. So imagine if you go to a tournament, um, if you've played in a tournament, you understand this flow. If you're thinking about jumping in, here's the flow. You arrive, you unpack your models. Now, X-Wing Miniatures is pretty easy. It, it fits in a shoebox or a little tackle box case. Warhammer 40K, a little bit more complex, especially given the size of the army. But you unpack your army, you arrive at the event, you unpack your army. Now you have to look, what table am I going to be at? And take your army over to that table. You play your game. Then you have a break. 
10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes before the next game. If you have to pack up your army, transport it to the next table, unpack it, that takes time. Uh, There's a chance a model will break. There's a chance something can get misplaced. As you take losses, think about this, as you take losses in the system and now you take your miniature, if you put it over to the side of the table, you have to pack it up. If you put it in your case, you're constantly taking your focus of the game away from physically the table to your gaming case. Maybe not a problem with X-Wing, but again, 40K, bigger scope, more scale of miniatures. Having a display board keeps you chill, keeps you relaxed in that you put your display board to the side. At the start of the tournament, you set up. Now you carry that over. You just walk that over. You set it down. You play. As you take losses, it go, the models, the miniatures, the units go on the display board. You can have a little spot for your dice, for your tape or your measuring sticks, maybe the rules. It allows you to transport to and from. That is massive. That is massive because now you're not under... Um, you're not rushed. And, and sometimes you play the game to the bitter end. There's been many tournaments where I, I've played to the end of the round. And the round ends. And now the next one begins in like, you know, 10 minutes. And I've got to go across the gaming hall. i got to find. i got to set up. You know, we got to roll off for sides. There's not much time. If it's all on the display board, I just pick it up. I walk and go. And I have to say, that was an excellent piece of advice that Matt gave me. And now anytime I go to play a tournament, I have a display board. And over the years, some very, very simplistic, literally just a picture frame with some textured gravel and some some basing effects and just like, you know, building or two. Other times, much, much more elaborate, much, much more advanced. And of course, going on YouTube, you'll see display boards with LED lights and moving parts. So you could totally bring in the hobby side to help even though they're only supposed to be judging your army, the display board, you know, we're visual creatures. The display board pulls it in, works on it from that perspective. So competitive play, yes. Display board for the hobby, absolutely yes.